Okay, so this is the sprocket hub. Uh, attached to the sprocket hub is the sprocket guard. Sprocket guard here, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to show you how to properly install a rear sprocket as well. So these are all 7 16 lugs, the same lugs that you typically use on uh, the hubs on all four corners of the car. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off all of these lugs. Should be six of them in this case. This is our standard setup with our standard uh, guard. We do sell carbon fiber guard, carbon fiber bolts, nuts, all that stuff as well. If you're looking for weight savings or rotating or to save on rotating weight. So, oh, there goes one. So we'll pop off this guy. Did I miss one? Oh, this one. So we'll pop off the guard. And one of the things I want you to notice when you look at this guard is that it goes on a very specific way. So one side of the guard is going to be flat. The other side of the guard is going to have these bushings that give you the distance that you need when you install the gear so the gear can float in between these two guards here. So as I take that off, you can see the studs remain because the sprocket hub itself is threaded. So I'll pop off both of these guards here. And then what we have is we still have this side of the guard on and you'll notice it's flush against the sprocket hub itself. The bolts are through here. And now is the time, this is how and you would want to install your, your sprocket. Now it's important that you look at these sprockets and that you install them the correct way so you don't, you don't lose a chain. You'll notice the sprocket itself will have a number on it, so it'll tell you the number of teeth on the sprocket itself. And typically they'll either have a notch or in this case they have a half circle that is cut into the end of the sprocket. And it's only on one end you'll notice. What you want to do is make sure when you're installing this that you're lining that up. You don't want to install the sprocket this way. That's incorrect. You want to make sure that you're always lining that up when you install the sprocket. The other thing you want to look at is that all of these guards, they are two pieces on both sides. There's a seam right here in this guard. Typically, you don't want to line up the seam of the guard with the seam or the split in the gear. So we often want to do those opposites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this sprocket on here, get it started on here. Okay, so you can see the seam of the sprocket is here. It is not lined up with the guard, all right? I can go one further and make it exactly the opposite, essentially, so that the seam is here, it's right there. So now what I need to do is look at the gear, look at the sprocket, find the half moon, it's right here, find it on the other side, and make sure that I'm lining those two up. Once I've done that, now the sprocket is on there. And the last thing that's left to do as I finish installing it is put the guard back on like this. And you see how the sprocket is now centered in the middle. I'll install the other guard again, the other side of the guard. And nothing here should really bind. You don't want anything here to bind. You want to make sure that all the seams line up nice and neat. There's no binding. What we like to do is take and start all of the nuts. Get them all started around here before we go and tighten anything down. And you want to watch the seams of both the sprocket itself and the seam in the guard to make sure that they're not binding. Sometimes what you'll notice is when you go to put the chain onto the car, you, if you notice that the chain is wanting to get tight, then loose, tight, then loose, tight, then loose, 
What you may need to do is loosen up these lug nuts, okay? These nuts, loosen them up all the way around just a little bit. Spin the chain until you remove the tight, loose, tight, loose, until it's going the way that you want it to, okay? It's smooth and turning correctly. Then go back in and tighten these down. What that will do is set the distance in the gap of the sprocket correctly to the distance of the chain lengths. So I'll say that again. What you want to do is if you have a chain that's that's either jumping or is, is going tight and loose, tight and loose, what you want to do is loosen these lugs, okay? Loosen all those up all the way around just a little bit. Spin the chain on the sprocket around the engine driver until it settles down then stop it and snug back up all of these nuts and that should take care of your problem uh, hopefully you don't experience that but it does happen from time to time so our standard sprocket hub the way that it goes on is there is a key stock that goes in the slot the key stock that's made uh, that comes with uh, the Tygo cart and is made fits perfectly in this slot so that it can't move left and right. Uh, you'll see a lot of people tape the ends of their um, key stocks. Uh, well, that's usually necessary if you have a really long slot and you're worried about it moving. Um, we don't typically have that problem. Uh, however, feel free to tape these if you want to on each side of the key stock. That's completely up to you. Uh, some people put lock collars on the left side and right side uh, the sprocket as well that's more rotating weight um, but if you're concerned about it moving uh, that's always a good idea if, if you have a concern with that we don't typically run them that way um, as we are often trying to reduce rotating weight so it'll have two three sixteenths inch allen head bolts right here um, this one and then this one there's also a little bit of a set screw right here as well. This set screw will put pressure against the key stock right there. Okay, so these not only squeeze against the axle, but then this also pushes against the key stock to keep it in place as well. But like I said, feel free to put lock collars if you feel necessary. What we typically do is when the chain's on the car and we have it on the sprocket itself, one thing you can do is spin the axle and it will help center the chain. That doesn't always work. It will get you close. At that point, what you want to do is you can obviously look from the back of the cart to the front of the cart and look at the, the drive gear and see if it looks straight. You can put a straight edge on it. There are products that have lasers, all of that stuff. It is very important that it is straight. Um, it's usually not too difficult to do by spinning it um, on the axle and, and or using a straight edge um, from the sprocket to the actual uh, drive gear as well. So I'm going to go ahead and snug this one back down uh, so that it can be transported and it won't flop around.